Today we are going to be learning how to make a pillow. Disclaimer, I know I say pillow weird. Um, but we're going to make these little cuties right here. Uh, they're very easy to make. It's all about layering fabric together using felt and some simple sewing techniques. I by no means am a master at sewing, but I think that's kind of the point that anybody can make these sort of things. This is an example of what we're going to be making today specifically. It's a nice square pillow. Um, here's some what you're going to need. You need some paper, some tracing paper, some felt, some colored pencils probably, a glue stick, some sizzies, some embroidery floss, uh, some fluff. What else we got here? We got a, a needle. You're going to need a straight needle. Uh, since we're using embroidery floss, I recommend using one with a large eye. So get your drawing. I recommend doing a, if you're going to be doing a 9 by 12 inch pillow, having an 8.5 by 11 inch piece of paper because it'll make it a lot easier to not screw up the border. But what I'm doing here is I'm coloring in very simply. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're not going to have anything as strong as like the felt is anyway. So just color it in so you know where all your colors are going to be. Once you're done with that, it comes to the tracing paper part. Now this is really important. Whenever you outline your shapes, because remember this whole thing is based off of shapes, it needs to be separate. Okay, so separate it. Now I got the little mouth and nose there, that's separate. Now I'm going to outline this ear. And then the next ear is going to be separate from it. It doesn't, matter, it doesn't have to be in the right order necessarily. You don't have to just trace the whole paper. But I got this eye here, at the other eye, and then I'm going to outline the individual shapes on top of that. I really emphasize this because it happens all the time of people just overlapping everything. No overlapping. Make your life a little bit easier, maybe write what it is on there as you go, just so you can remember, like a left or a right or blue, because you're gonna forget. All right, when you cut these out, don't cut them out to the image itself. You wanna cut them out a little bit bigger, uh, because you need to give yourself some leeway. And if you cut all the way to the edge, you're, something bad's gonna happen. All right, so you need to start planning about where you're gonna be putting stuff. Make sure you have all the space and all the felt. I'm just using some scraps here uh, because there's no reason to cut a tiny little white circle out of a giant piece of felt. So what you're gonna do first, visualize the future. Second, uh, you're gonna get your glue stick. Now, I'm a big fan of glue sticks. I use them in a lot of things. They're for the most part, non-toxic. Uh, so they won't destroy anything necessarily. Now, you're going to glue stick the back of this as best as you can. Just know that it's not going to stick forever, which is the point of it. A liberal application of glue stick. I wonder what's inside a glue stick. Like, what type of glue is that? Anyway, uh, go ahead and smack it down and then hold it there for a second so that way it can dry. Uh, when you cut it out, go ahead and just kind of cut a general amount out around it, so that way you can do a more refined cut. When you're cutting circles, you want to spin the shape as you cut with pretty tight pressure. No raggedy circles. Look at that. And you said it couldn't be done. Well, look at me now. Yeah, just pretty tight pressure in the hand. You'll get used to it. Or you won't, and it won't look good. Or verbally, it just looks good, though. All right. Once you have all your, all your pieces cut out, go ahead and lay them out so you can see the future. Um, and then you're going to start gluing them down to that. Again, I love glue sticks. So just a nice amount. Uh, there's no specific rule to how much you put down. It will want to come up, which is fine, because if this falls off, good. You can just put it back. we we'll go ahead and place it, and then the same thing as before, apply some pretty even pressure to help hold it down. Now, you can see here how we're applying the, uh, the eye down is going to help you out, because this whole thing is about layering, right? Layering. So you put the blue part down, or whatever the first layer is. Again, pressure. And then I'm putting the dark blue down for the pupil. Boop. 
And then I'm putting the white part down for the reflection that's on the eye. So it's all about layering upwards, okay? You gotta think a little bit differently from how you normally make art, maybe, to make something like this. Also, if you decide something's wrong, it peels up pretty easily and you can fix it. If it's easier for you to glue everything separately, then just glue it down to the base felt, that's fine too. All right, let's get the needles. Let's get to sewing, finally, jeez. Promise sewing and it takes forever. All right, so in these uh, uncertain times, uh, you can't really just stick thread in your mouth to be able to, to sharpen it up to put it through the eye of the needle. So I recommend using my favorite thing in the world, the glue stick. Kind of just drag it on there and it'll sharpen it up for you. That makes it a lot easier to be able to thread the eye of the needle, especially when you're not used to using embroidery floss or something like that, it's a lot thicker. So go ahead and pull it so there's a little bit down at the bottom. Don't tie those two strings together. I hate when people do that. Um, you just have to hold it whenever you're sewing. Now, we're gonna go over here, one of my favorite tricks. You need to tie a knot on the end. And how you do that is you wrap it around your finger and then you roll and pinch. Simple. I mean, I find it simple. Uh, if you can't do that, just tie a knot any way you can at the bottom. It, the point is, whenever you thread the needle through the fabric, when, you, you know, when you're sewing, it won't go through, and that'll be your starting knot. All right, so this first stitch we're gonna go over, um, it's called a back stitch. And by first stitch, I mean only stitch. It's my favorite stitch. You can look up your own stitches. There's hundreds out there. But you start always from the underside and you go up. And then you go down. What a world. And then guess what? You're gonna go up again. Now this is where it becomes a back stitch. You're gonna go back into the previous stitch. You can see it enough there. But you go backwards. And then you're just gonna be kind of looping forever. So, a loop all the way underneath forward. Stab back down into the place I initially came out of. So you're gonna do this kind of looping pattern for a while. Um, there's other stitches out there. I like this one because it's incredibly secure. So say you tear your pants or something. Um, this stitch will ensure that those pants don't tear again on that spot because it's very heavily reinforced. Maybe you bought some pants that are too long. You're just a little short fella. You can easily just hem those up really easily too. That's why I like this stitch. It's very multifaceted. You could use it for everything. When you're in the back, you're gonna loop the thread underneath it and then kind of just tie a knot. Um, go ahead and tie another knot because I don't trust people that only use one knot on things. Go ahead and cut off the excess. You can really cut it a lot closer than that. I don't know why I did that. All right, so another version of the back stitch uh, some people like is basically separating the stitches out like this and then you're going to just sew around and fill it in. That's an option if you want. Some people find it faster. If you find it faster, live your truth. It's not as secure as the other one. So for sewing, you can't really draw on the felt very well. So I recommend using um, a Crayola marker specifically for that. And then just sew the rest of it. Remember, anything that's a line has to be an embroidered sew. Take your backing fabric and kind of line it up with the front so you can see what it looks like. And now we're gonna sew all the way around the outside, starting where my finger was, right there. And then we're going to loop all the way around still using this back stitch. There's a bunch of other stitches you can use. I Feel free to look them up and try them out because they also look really good. But it's just the same simple back stitch, which again, hopefully you're comfortable with by now. And then you're going to sew all the way around. See that blue line that I have going all the way around? Until you can leave a little gap. Stick your needle into the side so that we don't lose it and grab your fluff. And time to fluff it up. Aim towards the corners first because it's easier to put the felt or the stuffing into the corners first. 
and then just jam that sucker full. It's, you need to stuff it a little bit fuller than you think because whenever you sew the piece down, it's going to kind of deflate a little bit. Um, this one's a little bit understuffed, but mm, whatever. Stuff it up. So you're gonna continue doing the back stitch uh, while kind of holding those pieces together. This is an uncomfortable moment, I will say. This is an awkward part of doing this. And you know, just kind of like take your time with it. Um, the whole process, I mean, sewing's something that it's kind of difficult to really get into, but it can become very relaxing once you get good. Especially when you're sewing around the edge, you just have a lot of time to kind of contemplate. It's like, how did I come here? What in my life led to this? Anyway, at the end, you're going to just tie a knot, finish sewing it, and then tie a knot like you had been the, the entire time. Um, the back looks a little bit wonky because there's some straight threads, but mm, whatever. You can tuck those in if you want, or you can just live with it like I do. It's fine. You made this pillow yourself. If anybody says, there's threads showing, you just go, well, show me your pillow. That's so great, Kevin. All right, so go ahead and round out some of that, that, uh, that fluff. Give it a good smoosh. Um, It's a really important part that you kind of like feel this whole thing out. And then the most important part, the head test. Is it good? Should be good. <laughs> All right. Pretty simple, right? See ya.